Hey guys. No. Mm -mm. That's fake. That's not what you do. Tell the truth, I look better under you. I can't lose when I'm with you. Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hey girl, hey, I am Zaria. And if you're not new here and you're returning, welcome back, babe. So I recently started this girl talk um series on tiktok and a lot of people really seem to like it y'all got like 10,000 plus new followers just off my girl talk so i figured i would bring the series over to my youtube channel and we would do a sit down video me and you together and we would talk about some of the most commonly asked topics in my comments on tiktok so topic number one which was a huge one i saw so many people asking for a video on it and i actually did a short two minute video on it on tiktok but i figured we would come on here and talk about it anyways overstepped boundaries y'all overstepped boundaries this goes for relationships marriages friendships whatever it may be if they're overstepping your boundaries the dis they're disrespecting you that's how i feel i feel like they're disrespecting you and basically you don't care about how i feel about certain things so it's just f me at this point so if you don't respect me what are we even doing what are we doing so i told y'all on tiktok about how my husband had a friend who kept a friend a friend somebody who claimed there was a friend or a sister um and she she kept overstepping boundaries she didn't respect me and like she had to go and i feel like i'm the type of person i am i'm not gonna say i'm like a really jealous person but i feel like i'm the type of person i can read a person very well so if i already know like your general aura is off about you it's a wrap for you what's that tiktok down it's a wrap for your baby like you literally gotta go like you literally gotta go because i'm not gonna take disrespect i'm not gonna take disrespect from anyone and i feel like overstepping boundaries has so many layers to it because it's not just about a marriage it's not just about a relationship y'all people overstep boundaries in a lot of ways and i can tell y'all one way that somebody completely out of my relationship overstep boundaries is my own dad overstepping boundaries telling me what i should and should should and shouldn't do like as a wife and what my husband needs to be doing and i just feel like we've been married for so long at this point we don't need any advice any advice we needed it was needed in the beginning it's not needed now so if i already told you one time i don't need your advice and you continue to give me your advice i feel like you're overstepping those boundaries because of this marriage is between us two it's not between us three like it has nothing to do with you so at this point you're disrespecting my boundaries you're disrespecting me him our family so you gotta go if you can't respect what i said just stay around me it's so clear like and also i know it's hard for a lot of people to say something and mean what they say stand their ground when it comes to family and it was hard for me too first trust me it was so hard i was letting people run over me say anything to me do anything to me and i had to let it go like i had to stop doing that because in the day people will run you into the ground if you let them They'll run you into the ground if you let them. A lot of people will say stuff like their mother-in-laws overstepping boundaries in their relationships and stuff. Listen, I never had no issues with my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law is cool. Thank you, God. I got one of the good ones because he probably knew I couldn't handle a crazy mother-in-law. And me, we would mix. So, but I'd say, honestly, some people be wanting to like, it'd be like they'd be so in love with their son. Like they can't let their son go and. So they see you come in, you're with their son, they feel like you're taking their son away from them so they feel like they can disrespect you. Honestly, it be time to let mama-in-law know, like, hey, this is what it is and this is what it ain't. This is what it's not going to be. And I know it's so hard to do because you're going to feel like you're disrespecting your partner because you're talking to his mom in a certain kind of way. If he can't see it, he need to go too because is it me or your mom who, who comes first like honestly i feel like overstepping boundaries it goes it's so many layers to it it's so complex and honestly y'all already know like i'm a, I'm a real blunt person like your ass can go another big topic that a lot of people um mentioned was anxiety y'all know <laughs> if y'all have been on here for a while watching me for a while following me on different platforms for a while y'all know i struggle pretty 
badly with anxiety and it's nothing new and it's nothing to hide and i feel like my anxiety heightened when i became a mom it definitely did because i just worry about so much other stuff but a lot of people were saying anxiety referring to like starting social media like starting on tiktok and youtube and i'm gonna tell y'all some crazy like when i first had like my first couple of videos blow up on tiktok obviously y'all know like how tiktok goes on like location sometimes and like if i don't know like if you're like in the general location of somebody and you have it turned on on tiktok where it can suggest your video to other people people like in your general area will see your video and um i was i had already started my day in the life series on tiktok and i got a comment on one of my videos and it said i think we're neighbors and i was like you know this is so like this is so weird i was telling my husband like oh my god i'm not doing no more videos because this right here is giving me major freaking anxiety like i don't know if it's yeah. but i was like this is so scary but it was like a creeper or whatever so i didn't i was just like i'm just gonna ignore the comment then i got on instagram and she had to me on instagram too and she was saying like she had seen me and my family here at our community and she was just too scared to speak and then my tiktok account came on her for you page and she was like oh my god i've seen her before and she decided to hit me up and I know she's a real legit person because I literally have seen her outside. I saw her Instagram account. I saw her Instagram story and I know that she was at the the community um, using like hot tub stuff. So I know she's a real person. But just to know that somebody from social media recognized me as someone like that lives like in the same space as them that caused me so much freaking anxiety because i'm like i log into tiktok youtube all this to like log out of the real world like when i log into my tiktok and i start doing a voiceover or when i sit in front of my camera and start talking it's like i'm in like an alternate world like an alternate space like this is not real like i feel like i'm in like a different universe because I can log on to social media and I can be whoever I want to be. I can say whatever I want to say and I'm going to reach my target audience. And my target audience is going to love me. It's not going to be like any... I don't really know what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is it scared the fuck out of me, okay? That's what I'm telling y'all. It really, really, really scared me. And I follow... Oh, I can't think of her name. I've been watching her on YouTube forever. Um, Like, she's like an OG she go way back and she was saying one time how you have to learn how to keep social media and real life like separate and that's so true and i didn't really understand what that meant until my own little platform started to blow up and stuff like i know if i see little baby and jada waiter in public i'm gonna be total fangirl okay i'm gonna be total fangirl i probably won't run up on them just because i know like Little baby be clutching and also i know that's like kind of weird they're still humans like they're still just people but i probably would like sneak a picture of them and be like you know look who i saw whatever but what i am saying is i'm still just a regular human and i know some of my videos have reached half a million people so it it's only a matter of time before somebody see me in public and they recognize me and they want to stop and talk to me and it's gonna cause me major anxiety. I just know it's gonna cause me major anxiety. And I'm not saying that like, oh, she thinks she does stuff and this and that. No, what I'm saying is I'm just literally a real person. And I know I talk to all my people on TikTok. I call them my besties, my babes. I respond to everybody's comments. Like I engage a whole lot um, with my community. But you never know who's like really behind the account, who's really the face of the comments that are being left on your videos and it's just such a scary world that we live in that it's almost like one of those things that kind of just shakes me a little bit to my core and it makes me so scared and almost makes me not want to post content anymore because I just get like major anxiety about somebody like getting like obsessed with me and just I don't know I don't know okay what I'm saying is I have freaking anxiety and if you want to start posting on TikTok and YouTube it's okay to have anxiety about it it's okay you just have to learn how to keep social media and your real life separate another thing don't overshare certain platforms okay in my YouTube videos I used to always put my snapchat in the um in the description bar and I guess once my TikTok account blew up people started coming over to my YouTube channel 
subscribing, watching my old videos. Somebody found my Snapchat and I don't know if it's a girl or a guy. I don't know they added me on Snapchat. I usually add everybody back on Snapchat because it's literally just pictures and I have a private story where I know all 43 people that's in the private story where I usually post stuff. I usually don't even post stuff on my regular account, you know, like on my regular story. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, what? Speaking of, let me make sure I posted this. Okay, I had to make sure I posted this in my private story. Okay, but um, the person kept on calling me on Snapchat. Like they kept, that was blowing me up. And I was like, oh my God, like this is weird. You know, like this is weird. And I don't want to block one of my followers, but honestly, we have to learn how to keep certain stuff private. Like if you have a way to call me, I feel like that's a bit much that's a bit much like you don't need to be calling me because we really ain't got nothing to talk about like i'm gonna engage with your comments and stuff but like just to call me is crazy because you don't know me and i don't know you know you so i had to um i, I was like what you know who is this and she was like oh you know i'm sorry I, i'm here from tiktok um it's my baby who keeps calling you and i was like okay you know that's believable because sometimes my kids do like my phone and they'll be like calling people and stuff then it kept happening for days and I had to block her because I was just like, you know, that's scary. So if you are thinking about pursuing content creating, thinking about creating a platform, definitely keep certain socials private. I feel like even my Facebook, I have one made it private because it's certain things on there that I don't want like everybody to see. Like Facebook is a little community of like family and classmates and people I've known for for years I don't want like all 25 26 I think we get 26 K or something. I don't want all those people on my Facebook I just don't know keep certain stuff private I'm telling you I gotta keep certain stuff private you gotta have a life outside of social media like some stuff you gotta keep private so yeah okay well, I'm gonna pick up my phone and look up the next topic well I, I made a little note thing in my session thing. okay People ask about, well, people needed advice about how is it when you first start living with a guy? Because I always tell them I literally moved out of my mom's house five days after I graduated high school and I was already married, had an apartment, everything. My mama didn't know anything. So I moved away from Alabama to Jacksonville, Florida. And I moved in with CJ. And I will tell you that living with a man, living with a male, it is an adjustment. Especially when you're that young and you're coming straight from your mom's house you have a whole set of ground rules at your mom's house versus now you're in your own house and it's like okay you know this is new this is fresh this is this is nice and then <clears throat> you start living with a guy and it's kind of like okay this is a little bizarre because he might be doing things that you don't like you might be doing things that he don't like so for me, I have always had OCD. I've always struggled with it really, really, really bad when we first moved in. I already knew my husband was not like the tidiest person, but like him like walking in the house on the carpet with his work shoes on or him just jumping out of his uniform at the front door, leaving it on the ground, leaving the toilet seat up and I'm uh, pregnant. I gotta run in there in the middle of the night and throw up or pee and I'm falling into the toilet water like it was little things that just kind of like bothered me him not closing the shower curtain fully him opening the cabinets and not closing the cabinets like how hard is it just to shut the cabinet back I feel like it's those little things that really tick the hell out of you when you first move in with a, a partner so my number one tip would be to have a thorough discussion about ground rules. Just gonna be ground rules of the house, what's gonna fly, what's not gonna fly. Another thing with my husband, he is a late night snacker. He loves to eat in late at night and he loves to eat in the bed. And for me, I don't like all no prompts in my bed. If I'm eating, I'm gonna stand in the kitchen. I'm not bringing it to my bed. So that was another thing that we used to fall out about all the time. Why is these pop tart crumbs in the bed? You know, like it'd be little stuff. Another big thing that people don't think about is the temperature of the house. What's the temperature gonna be? 
I'm a really hot natured person and so is my husband but 74 is usually pretty good for me for him it's typically 69 like he likes it freezing to where the windows in the house is frosted so that's another thing we used to fall out about all the time but living with a guy is definitely an adjustment I'm not gonna lie especially when you've never done it before and you're coming from living with your parents it is an adjustment but I will say it was just nice like it was nice because leading up to the time I graduated and moved out, um, every weekend we were in somebody else's house, like my mama or his mama. We were at somebody else's house and like when you're at somebody else's house, you know, you can't really do what you want to do. And no, I'm not talking like that. I'm just saying like sometimes it's nice to know like this house belongs to me and my husband. I can come in here and stretch out on this couch if I want to. I can come in here. We can come in here and stretch out on the couch if we want to. We can walk around. Sorry, y'all. I literally ran out of space on my SD card, so I had to change it. But, yeah, like I was saying, we can walk around this house but naked if we want to. And it's just something about knowing that it's yours. Like, it's yours. Nobody can take it from you. It's the best feeling in the world. Now, another thing that I got was people, like, asking about like how do you have confidence how do you work on your confidence confidence after a baby how do you work on being confident on like tiktok and how do you build a platform like some people like i hate my voice confidence all boils down to exactly who you think you are and um that's the short way i can put it so if i get up i do my brows right there i do my hair i know i'm a bad itch like and nobody can take that away from me Confidence is looking in the mirror and know exactly who you are, feeling exactly who you are, and knowing that nobody can stop that. Like, I feel like nobody can stop that. I feel like, I feel like confidence and like self-care comes hand in hand because when you look good and when you look good, you feel good. So, of course, if I go get my hair done, if I go get my nails done, if I go get me a wax, if I go get my brows waxed, get my lashes done, I'm going to feel good. So, I think that ties hand in hand with taking care of you and making yourself a priority. Yes, I know sometimes as moms, we get so guilty when we spend money on ourselves because it's like, oh my God, I just spent $250 on myself. I could have bought my kids this. I could have bought my kids that. Girl, sometimes you got to say up them kids, okay? Them kids got everything they want and need plus more. What about you? Sometimes you got to focus on you. And that's something that I have such a hard time with sometimes. And CJ kind of have to snap me back to reality. Like, um, why do you need to buy the kids $200 worth of clothes? And they just got $200 worth of clothes last month. What about you? You need new stuff, you know? So a lot of people asked about that and also postpartum depression i'm not gonna lie to y'all i suffer with ppd both times if you watch some of my old vlogs um in japan when kate was a baby i was going through it and i kind of shared a little bit of my journey postpartum depression is a silent killer if you let it be it will take you out i'm telling you you have to get up you got to get yourself out the bed you got to clean your space make your space nice when your space for me when my space is clean nice and clean i feel so much better but not only that make yourself a priority yes you do have this little baby who now depends on you and needs you for everything but also the baby need mama too and mama cannot be the best version of herself if she doesn't take care of herself because you can't pour from an empty cup so you got to get up sometimes you got to call grandma you got to call the baby dad you got to say hey look i need a day for myself i'm going to bring the baby and I'm going to take X amount of time and I'm going to go take care of myself. And I guarantee when you come back, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel refreshed. You're not going to feel overwhelmed because sometimes we just simply need a break. It's so easy. Sometimes we literally just need a break and it's nothing wrong with that. Like it's nothing wrong with needing a break because I've been a stay at home mom for almost four years, y'all. Carter's about to turn four in June and I would be lying if I say I don't take probably at least a day a week just for myself and then it can be something so small something simple as going to starbucks going to target going to tj maxx just going to walk around and get out the house without the kids nobody crying nobody yelling at you nobody yanking on you nobody needing you it's just you and there's nothing wrong with that i used to feel so guilty about wanting time for myself sometimes cj had to kind of snap me out of that like babe you still you're you're still more than a mom a mom is not your whole identity you are still a wife you're still zaria 
outside of being a mom you are still you you still so many other things so you gotta really prioritize yourself because you literally still matter whether you believe it or not you still matter so you gotta act like it girl another thing that i would say is set personal goals set timelines and really put yourself on a schedule if your personal goal for this week is to cook three meals in the week the other two times you're gonna meal prep and no back up set goals for yourself if your personal goal is to cook dinner three times this week the other two nights you're gonna eat out do that if your goal is to go to the gym for three days of the week go to pilates three days for the week go to yoga three days for the week put yourself on a schedule do that one of my biggest things that helped me be on schedule y'all is digital planning i digital plan i don't know looking for i don't know where my ipad is but i got my ipad and a little pencil to go with it i digital plan all the time i map out my weeks it always don't go the way i map it out but for the most part it does and i really can say writing it down putting it out there holding yourself accountable is so much better than just saying in my mind like i'm gonna do this because if i just say i'm gonna do this i'm probably not gonna do this because nine times out of the ten i'm not gonna even remember what i said i'm gonna do but if i write it down i'm gonna remember okay i'm gonna remember but yeah i've been ranting and my camera for like 26 27 something minutes and my camera is flashing at me now because it's about to go dead because i also vlog today vloggy vlog coming soon i've been trying to be more consistent on my channel get the vlogs out quicker and do better editing i'm not a super editor but i am getting a little better so <coughs> stay tuned for that so yeah let me know what y'all want to talk about in the next girls talk because for tonight that's all i got to talk to y'all about i just talked to y'all about the main things y'all commented on on my tiktok and if you don't follow me on tiktok go follow me because what you're doing go follow me right now so yeah babes that's all for today's video i love y'all and i will see y'all in the next video